What is going on? This is Acid Room. So I'm going to review the seventh album by rock band Smash Mouth. Basically, this product is called Magic, and it came out in the late summer of 2012. So the thing about this particular product is just the fact that this, this is the most recent Smash Mouth album in terms of like studio, actual After Effects. In terms of studio, actual After Effects, this is the final album that has Steve Harwell on there before his death in 2023. Before his death in 2023, which was an unfortunate situation. I look after it. Yeah, this is, there is like a 2023 album called Mistletoes, which, had, which is a pretty good pitch. There's like Smash Mouth has done a little bit since 2012 as far as those pitches are going to happen. They did like a holiday album in 2023 called Mistletoes. I'm going to have to get to that one. Some of that type fair, but really for the most part, this is the most recent one in terms of actual studio appeals and pitches like that. I'd had to say a good concept for this particular product. Now, unfortunately, I do like Summer Girl from 2006 Leagues better. They just had a little bit more oomph in that particular product a little bit. I mean, I gave that particular product like a 10 out of 10. Definitely some hits on there. Just an overall good haze and overall appeal towards it. It felt like Smash Mouth, despite the fact that they were kind of beleaguered by way out in 2006, still had like an extra kind of spark in them to kind of have some of that alternative rock kind of radio dredge. Definitely had like that campy kind of Spider-Man 2S kind of makeshift dredges within that relative aspect, despite the fact that they're charting days from like, I'm a believer and like, then the morning comes and some of those type ones, All-Star definitely, some of those type pitches were kind of sense behind them i look after it this album realizes that as well i mean obviously i think they probably had that figured out by 2006 i'd have to say maybe their 2003 album it came as a surprise but by 2006 it was just kind of the concept of this is basically just kind of sticks to like the core fans of it this is not a bad album it's just kind of concept it's a little bit haphazard but i wouldn't have to say that it's a horrid album it's just kind of the concept for folks that maybe they fucked with Smash Mouth back in 97, 99. If you haven't fucked with them for a while, it's just a good revisit to kind of get towards some of this. Now, it like, now 2006's Summer Girl was not campy and more kid-centric. This particular album, I think you can tell by the album cover, returns to some of that relative campiness that was on their 2003 album. Get the picture as far as that particular player kind of goes. Not to say that that's like a bad, not to say that that's like a bad thing, but it's just a little bit more vanilla rock. So last, the 2006 album Summer Girl was a lot, was a lot more alternative rock dredge and just more pitches of like, Folks, like when you think of like Breaking Benjamin and folks like that, I'd have to say like some of those type ones, AFI, some of those type pitches that kind of did Alternative Rock 2006, some of those type flares. This one is a lot more vanilla. It's basically like a good, clean version of what 2003's Get the Picture was, even though Get the Picture does not have like, you know, kid, PG, kids movies type soundtrack songs on this particular one. I would have to say it's just the concept that it's, it's probably the second closest kid-centric album. I'd say the most kid-centric would probably be like 2003's get the picture and this is like the second closest but this is not a bad album when you look after this particular album you know the word shit is on this particular album which is pretty dope like the concept the thing about smash mouth that is this kind of the concept about it, is just the fact that it you know folks don't comprehend like the concept in terms of like full-blown aspects like Steve Harwell mentions Playboy Mansion on one of the songs on here, talking about just cruising, you know, being at Playboy Mansion and checking out some of the chicks in there, which I think was actually the song Flipping Out, as far as that particular pitch kind of goes along with it. So it is this kind of concept that Steve Harwell probably actively had women in his life, not to say that, like, that there's a question of that, but just the concept that some of these, when you listen to the lyrics, it's not quite as kid-centric when... I just think that that's kind of like a front a little bit when you think of songs like I'm a Believer, or All Star, some of those type ones that just feel like more of like kind of more kid centric type songs that you would hear in like elementary school yards and pitches like that. But the actual concept of it is, is it has that vanilla sheen, but it's just the concept that this is a band that was having fun and just the aspect of it. And this kind of happens to be the things I look after. That even though you could say that within the appeal behind it is kid centric, it's actually like a pretty good gateway just to go forth the rock music just within that particular tone of it. So it's just the concept, you know, just as a throwback for folks. And, you know, there were folks that probably stuck with Smash Mouth despite the fact that they hadn't really had any mammoth kind of charting hits since 2001. That would have been a decade after. That would have been a decade before this particular album or over a decade. But it's just kind of the concept that, yeah, there's just some good appeal here. So the unfortunate thing is, is there's really only one single. This is just a very briefly promoted, just very mildly... And mild is kind of a light way of saying it, just very mildly to say the least kind of aspect of this, really the promotion aspect behind it. They didn't really attempt any further singles. This kind of caused it, it took six years between Summer Girl and this one. They didn't really have any interim projects or things like that. So this is kind of the concept that you just got this one and then that was pretty much the end of it, which is kind of thing. But, you know, it does have some gems on here. It's just kind of concept. It's just kind of like a sly kind of, 
I just I feel more over like Smash Mouth was kind of playing possum, just the aspect behind it. I mean, they have the aspects behind it. They were living pretty good, and they had pretty lavish things, I'd have to say. So it's just a good concept for that. But <clears throat> so yeah, I'll go ahead and talk about the single here. So the, the single is the song Magic, which is the title track. So it's a good pitch for this. It's like an electro bounce kind of jumper. I would feel like this reminds me of like B.O.B., the stuff that he was doing in 2010 with the Avengers of B.O.B., some of those type of pitches. There's a rapper on here named Jay Dash, which is a pretty good pitch. Haven't heard of him, but it's pretty it's a pretty dope concept that there's rappers on a song with Smash Mouth because that didn't happen as much. I look after this like a good radio grab. I would definitely feel like a pretty good modest type club song to kind of get from Smash Mouth around these times. Just something that could have hoisted them back into the spotlight pitches like that. This is like some light EDM type sounds. I would feel like pretty similar to like LMFAO, Cobra Starship, 303, some of those type folks. Just a more vanilla aspect of some of those type folks from the early 2010s. It's pretty super club hit. So this is a pretty nice one. This is like a final almost kind of real. I mean, obviously Smash Mouth has put out more singles since about the early 2020s pitches like that. I'm not sure what the last true Steve Harwell song was. I don't know if he did more songs with them in like 2014, 2016, 2018, some of those type pitches. But in terms of that, this is one of the most recent songs by Smash Mouth that just has the overall electricity of something that's not from like the 90s or like the all-star days or pitches like that. I'm a believer days, I'd have to say. So it's good enough. Do you feel like this is a pretty super club song? It's like that. It just really feels like something that you would have probably heard just from folks like Rihanna, Rihanna, 303, LMFAO, some of those type of folks in particular. This real light EDM. Good concept for that. But yeah, that's the only single. So basically, there's 11 songs on this particular album, real snappy, just within that tone, but it's a good concept behind us. Out of the 11 songs on here, basically on the Spotify edition, there's two there's two additional songs of the song Magic. There's a radio edit, and then there's like a remix. So I'm just going to go ahead and review the 11 song edition. So basically, out of these 11 songs, there's six I, there's six I recommend. So the six songs I recommend would be Magic, Perfect Planet, Live to Love Another Day, don't you forget about me better with time and flipping out so yeah i feel like a real classic song by smash mouth here a real excellent type one that probably should have been a single but probably would have been pretty hammy to have gotten it's not a hammy song but just the aspect of it is just a really kind of overcast type song very strong song for like the 60s or 70s whenever it came out it's a cover song of don't you forget about me this is a superb cover song i would definitely have to say a typical gem from smash mouth this is when they do some of those like they did uh, can't get enough you baby some of those type ones and i'm a believer some of those type pitches and why can't we be friends some of their some of their other notable cover songs just within that pitch typical gem from smash mouth like i was saying it's like a groovy feel good stretcher of a song to really get here so it's just good aspect steve harwell handles this particular song pretty well as far as that pitch kind of goes real nice appeal behind this particular one so it's just a real nice one just uh <clears throat> I don't want to say it feels hammy, but it is kind of like a stretching. It's, it's an overbearing type one. So if you're not in the mood for like a more kind of just larger than life kind of energy about that particular one, it's kind of similar. Like I, I like listening to I'm a Believer, but that one's kind of over the top. Just not so much over the top in terms of quality, but it's the aspect that's uh, it's kind of borderline kind of just overbearing within some of that pitch. But it's just the boisterous kind of energy. There are moments that call for those particular type songs. And Don't You Forget About Me is definitely one of those. Same thing with I'm a Believer, some of those type pitches. But this nails the appeal behind it real stellar song on here real stellar song on here another highlight on here would be better with time it's like a real this is like a dreary kind of real talk song i would have to say it doesn't sugarcoat things i would definitely feel like and it reminds me of the song waste from their astro long days it reminds me of the waste single from their astro lounge days i would definitely have to say and it's like some pretty good rock dredge to kind of get here so some of these there are some songs on this particular product that probably could have been singles just within the tone i feel like better with time is one that probably could have done that. I feel like definitely Don't You Forget About Me is probably one that could have done that. There's some ones like Flipping Out would have been another nice touch with Jay Dash that probably could have been a nice one to have kind of gotten. Some of these type ones, I feel like Live to Love Another Day is pretty similar to like Why Can't We Be Friends with some of that restaurant type noise. There's some good ones on here. It's actually pretty commercial, all that. I mean, the thing about Smash Mouth is they do retain their vanilla rock type tones. The Smash Mouth is pretty much like one of the gateway kind of starting points, it seems like, for rock music. Just a good concept. Just kind of have like some of those. Just, I mean, they're, it's just, it's un, they're, they're not just vanilla. They're like the, I, I can't really think of like, normally I would have some sort of joke for this and talk and talking about. They're like the Andes frozen custard of like vanilla, just in terms of that. They're like really like notable kind of ice cream vanilla in terms of like their vanilla-ness and like the rock type of feel. So it's just the concept that a lot of this is just kind of going to be like, uh, has that commercial bite. I feel like Smash Mouth is just folks that despite, I mean, 
you could listen to some of these songs and think that it's just commercial ra rock radio singles. You could listen to some of these album cuts and just think that they're commercial rock kind of singles just within the pitch. So it's just kind of the concept. This, they're in-between type ones, but it does have some pretty good appeal about it just within casual-wise if if you still fuck with Smash Mouth pitches like that. And it's not like you wouldn't, but it's this kind of thing. But So Flipping Out is a nice one. It's like a basic kind of summer afternoon kind of frolic, I would feel like. It's like a typical kind of afternoon. This is like a typical kind of outdoor drive, I would have to say. Lazy day squabble fun, I would have to say about this one. Bickering type song to kind of get relationship back and forth, definitely within that concept. Just like some stock album fun to kind of get here. So it's just another good album cut. This one's pretty similar to like Perfect Planet and Live to Love Another Day. Some of those type ones. The standard kind of summer dredge, like I was saying. Yeah, it's just the aspect behind some of these vanilla type ones on here. It's just too bad that Smash Mouth didn't have more albums out in like the 2010s. I think it's just kind of the concept. They kind of got like a bad rep. It seems like a lot of folks kind of. I don't want to say full blown folks, but Smash Mouth just got some bashings around that particular time just because their heyday was just always seen as like the late 90s to the very early. Their heyday was always seen from like the late 90s to the early 2000s. But the actual con, I mean, they were pretty slick around this particular time. So it's kind of constant kind of get some of that commercialness about it. But yeah, you get some ones on here. I mean, I'll say this is the song flipping out that kind of has the Playboy Mansion reference as far as those pitches kind of happen. It's a concept. The same thing, songs like Live to Love Another Day have some good pitches behind that as well. You know, it, it's not really that kid centric. It's just kind of the concept of just being more vanilla. Live to love, live to love another day is a nice highlight here. There's like a smooth kind of summer evening unwind. I would definitely feel like it's like a basic kind of head to the bar and mingle type tone to kind of get here. And it's like some restaurant noise. I would definitely feel like it's this pretty dope song. This particular song, Live to Love Another Day, just reminds me more of like a more 2010s version of like, why can't we be friends from like their days of Fu Shu Mang as far as that pitch kind of goes along with it. Good concept. Yeah, just the, as a throwback, it's not tons of restaurant type music on here. The concept of Smash Mouth, just when you go to like a restaurant, go to like some of these places, TGI. IF or Olive Garden, some of those type pet pitches just have some good food there. I mean, it has like its out and feel. A lot of this, most of this album is just kind of more summer frolicking just within that tone, but just the old days of just going out and having like some dinings and pitches like that. There's not as many songs as much. I mean, it has like some decent date night and date afternoon type pitches on here, but for the most part, it's a little bit, it's not quite as social. I look after it's just kind of more dredgy, just kind of kick back. I mean, there's a little bit of makeshift. I mean, this is a snappy album, so there's a little bit of makeshift on here. Songs like Flipping Out, songs like Don't You Forget About Me, Better With Time, some of those type pitches just having to be a little bit more makeshift dredge pitches like that. Was just some good concepts there for that. And then like Live to Love Another Day. Live to Love Another Day is like more bar hopping and then Magic. And uh, Magic is definitely like a club oriented type one. And then Perfect Planet and Flipping Out are just like some summer frolic in it, I'd say. So some good concepts for that. Perfect Planet, to speak of that one, is like a late day kind of vanilla pop rock drug. I definitely feel like it's like some in motion kind of slag I'd have to say here. This reminds me of like their 2006 album, Summer Girls, as far as those pitches kind of happen. This is just some good radio rock kind of fodder here to kind of get. Do you appreciate the concept of this particular one? It's really, I look after some of these. Uh, so I'd have to say, it's kind of some relative dredgy type moments. I do feel like better with time. There's actually more than. So most of the songs I recommend on here are more dredgy. I'd have to say there is a little bit, at least one song, Magic is a Club song. At least one song, don't you? Or at least one song, Live to Love Another Day is like some bar hopping. And then, yeah, that, that's pretty much more in like the ousting type fair. So it's just not, I don't know. I was kind of saying earlier that this is not as much like a social album. This is a lot more just summer, enjoying the sunlight, just within a more kind of relative, um, just within a relative kind of less available type format. It's just kind of the concept, just kind of more preoccupied, I'd have to say. I mean, the concept behind it, I mean, with this being a snappy album, we'll go ahead and talk about some of the things I don't recommend as much on here, I'd have to say, just to be able to say, like, the concept of this particular product is just, you know, some of these ones on here just have, like, a lack of this, like, jump off the page. A lot of this just feels like pop rock radio fluff that just doesn't really have the aspect. Like, Justin Bieber was just kind of a poor type one just because that particular one was, I mean, this is one of the ones that panders more to like the kid centric type style as far as that particular kind of goes. Talking about Justin Bieber and like the past tense when he was really at the height of his popularity. I think that one was just more appealing to like the younger setting with that. It's kind of where younger sets uh, around that particular age feel like they're old and weathered when really folks that were fans of Justin Bieber were probably like 15 or 17 around that time, I'd have to say. It didn't really have too much of like a tone behind that one, but. Maybe that's a song that you could listen to years later within that pitch just to reminisce by look after this and don't have much appeal about it. Out of Love was just kind of a poor type, uh, breakup type song and pitch like that. Just kind of one that just was a little bit hammy just within the tone. I feel like Don't You Forget About Me just nailed it that much better, I'd have to say. 
future ex-wife is just kind of more of like a frolicking type one, just summer haze type one to kind of get pretty similar to like Perfect Planet, but Perfect Planet just nailed it a lot better, just would have to say. It, it just felt a little bit, it felt more campy and just didn't really have the particular vibe about it. The game was just kind of an optimistic type one. This one's just trying to get you in the spear and get you up and Adam, as far as this pitch, is kind of having this another younger pandering type one. It's, I mean, I recognize it has its purpose, but I just, it didn't really have as much affability within that tone, I'd have to say. Then She's Into Me was just kind of a cheesy, just kind of feel-good type song that just didn't nail it quite as well. I mean, it had like the smooth factor about it, but I just feel like there's better songs for doing that. I'd have to say probably Magic just nailed it that much better. Magic just nailed it better. Live to Love Another Day just nailed it better. Some of those type ones and flipping out, just, flipping out just nailed it better within those tones. But So that basically covers it as far as this particular album, as far as that pitch we kind of have with it. So the score I'm going to give this album, me recommending six songs out of 11 on here. I'm going to go ahead and give this album like a 6.25 out of 10. I feel like it has like enough affability behind it. It's a real nice app. It's a real nice, has some real nice charisma on this particular product. Typical Smash Mouth as far as I was going to go. Some Summer Frolic, but this is a fun album within a relative sense, but it's just more preoccupied and it just doesn't have as much like, I think the aspect behind it, it just the promotion cycle of this product was relatively brief and it just didn't have like, I mean, the moments behind it, if, I mean, it definitely had the right amount of song variety on here. I did like songs like Don't You Forget About Me and, uh, songs like better with time some of those type pitches that just spice things up in terms of not just being strictly like summer shots and just bountiful kind of summer energy but i look after it i definitely think it needed another song like magic the single probably need at least a second single something like that i do feel like the first three songs that you hear on here perfect planet live to love another day are like some summer frolicking within that tone but uh it feels less focused i'd have to say it's just kind of the concept it's vanilla rock here and it just uh, uh, it applies to like the hard it applies to like the hardcore fan base that smash mouth had around this particular time for folks that stuck with them after like their commercial spotlight days but i just look after it just a little bit more haphazard this is kind of the concept about it just some of these songs on here it's kind of clumsy type ones that just didn't really have the same aspect about it justin bieber future ex-wife she's into me some of these type ones just compared to like I, mean, I definitely feel like the summer frolicking type moments they nailed and then some of these other type of aspects but this is kind of telling this in terms of kind of it's kind of more strength the album type because they either needed more moments like the single or just some some other angle to kind of play just within the tone as far they either needed more moments like the single or just other further strengths that could have helped showcase this product and just have made it a lot more vibrant it's just a snappy type product but when there's not when there's a series of songs that you don't recommend it's just kind of the concept about it so i just feel like I definitely think when you think of like albums like Summer Girl or just pitches behind it, I just think it needed probably, I mean, they nailed the cover song, they nailed the hit single, they nailed some of those type pitches, some of these summer bops, these restaurant type music, but just trying to think of like, you know, I, I guess and just need, it, it felt like they needed a few more strengths within that, but it's just kind of thing, this either more quantities of their strengths or just something new that they could have tried as far as that pitch kind of went but i realized that you know by this stage they were just smashing out their kind of afterthoughts so that's the pitch behind it but the social score is going to get that's kind of tricky i'm going to go ahead and get the social score like probably like a 5.75 out of 10 i feel like there's enough appeal on this particular product i do feel like the first three songs perfect planet live to love another day and magic all have some relative appeal flipping out it's like some basic kind of day commerce like a basic sense and then don't you forget about me and better with time or like some decent kind of car dredge type ones and pitches like that but i just would have to say i mean it's an affable type one but it's just not as full bone social i'd say it's this kind of concept it's kind of more preoccupied just kind of feels it's a little bit mo the energy behind this project is somewhat haphazard i mean it's in the, it's not to say that like it's a beleaguered project it's just kind of the concept that it just does not carry the same vibrant energy that smash mouth kind of had on like astro lounge and even summer girl it doesn't carry the same energy from smack from astro lounge and summer girl and some of those type albums and fushu mang some of those type pitches i just would have to say it's this kind of the concept behind and this album has some of the campiness about it but it's this kind of aspect that's the only real thing that that could probably happen at this particular stage considering how far they were out of the spotlight and just the pitches like that it's not to say it's bad stuff so it's kind of the concept that they just you know they were past their prime as far as those pitches gonna happen but i look after just being able to say in terms of the future that's kind of difficult steve harwell is unfortunately deceased pitches like that they haven't dropped an album since this particular album i look after it kind of the concept about it i would have to say they did drop like a holiday album in late 2023 called mistletoes they have put out like some singles and pitches like that i'd have to say just within the concept they do have like a series of ones that are probably 
I don't know if they'll put out another album, but I look after it like there is like a few more projects to get to, and I'm going to get to some more of these. Definitely like their holiday albums. There's two of them. So there's some pictures like that, and then there's like a compilation album I want to get to. So thing that I'm trying to express about this is this review gets longer. It's just me trying to say that this is kind of a haphazard project. They had the strengths on here, but this is kind of the fact that it just needed more variety upon that. I think they were aiming for like a snappy album for like a this compact type one, like Astro Lounge or like Fushu Meng, some of those type pitches. But I just feel like some of these kind of more shoddy and just kind of more half baked or just kind of underwhelming album cuts just detract from it. Because I definitely think when you listen to a song like Magic or when you listen to a song like Don't You Forget About Me or you listen to a song like. Uh, better with time or live to love another day these are just some pitches that the strengths are definitely on here and it just kind of feels like there need to be more quantized type atmospheres of getting towards that